Hi, thanks for coming by. Welcome. I'm excited to have you here as a um, visitor for the first Mage 2 Kata video. Uh, I hope to make this a regular series. So if you enjoy it, please let me know, ping me on Twitter, leave a comment, and um, here we go. Welcome to the first installment of Mage 2 Katas. We will start with the Skeleton Module Kata. What I have planned is to create a module called Mage 2 Kata Skeleton Module, and I want to create a test first. Typical for Magento, the first Kata won't include unit tests but instead utilize the Magento 2 integration test framework. This is because writing configuration is an integral part of development in Magento, and the parsing and processing of that configuration is done mostly by core classes. I've already set up the integration test framework. I won't go into much detail here how that works. You can refer to many blog posts how that is done. Mainly, I've just set up the integration test database. All right, let's start. Since this is a Composer install, I'll start by creating the code directory. You can see it's marked as a sources root, so PHP Storm will automatically be able to add the correct namespace. This isn't really necessary for the kata though. Next we need a namespace and a module directory. And we'll put the tests into the directory test integration. Okay. There are many possible locations for integration tests in Magento 2, but for the screencast, adding it to the module directory sounds like a good idea. Okay, time to add the first test here. Uh, okay, not my usual screen resolution. So let's call this skeleton module config test since we are testing the module configuration. And we'll extend PHP unit framework test case. All right, and I'll follow Uncle Bob's lead here and start with a test nothing test to see if I've got my test environment set up correctly. I prefer this test to fail. I've already set up a test run configuration in PHP Storm here. It runs my custom integration tests using a local PHP unit XML file. Here I added a test suite that runs all integration tests in custom modules. And of course the test fails with the expected message. Okay, now we can write the first test and we'll start with testing that the module is registered. To do that we'll check with this thing, the component registrar. The idea is that I want to have a test that will allow me to write the registration PHP file. This will give us a list of all registered modules, an array where the key is the module name and the value is the directory path to the respective modules. So I want to test that the module, mage 2 kata skeleton module, is contained within the array. Oops, actually I should have used the assertion method array has key. And I expect this test to fail. Unfortunately it's so slow to run the integration tests I want to start refactoring. Oh, here we go. It fails, uh, but we already know the module isn't registered. Now we can add the registration.php file. I got tired of copying that file from a core module, so I added a little PHP Storm file template for that. This time I expect our test to succeed. While we're waiting, I'll extract the module name into a field and call that module name then we can reuse it in the next test. Okay, now the test passes, good. I decided to do a little edit here and cut in a segue because chances are that if you are running PHP unit with the default configuration, you might experience a different outcome for this test. This, 
you might be seeing the infamous there are no commands defined in the setup namespace error message. This is happening because we have a registration PHP file but no matching module XML file in the module. And this error happens if in your test configuration the test cleanup value is set to enabled. And this happens to be the default value. So why is this error happening if we have test cleanup enabled? Well, in the test framework application that Magento uses to run the integration tests, if test cleanup is enabled, this method is called. In this cleanup method, it copies the deployment config and then runs bin Magento setup uninstall. The idea is to give us a clean slate for each test run. To fix this, all you need to do right now is disable the test cleanup. This will not only avoid running bin Magento on each test run, it will also make our tests run faster. This change will make our test pass, even though we don't yet have a module XML file. And thanks to Christoph Ringleff, aka Fuman, for pointing out this configuration setting to me originally. And this completes my little segue. So our next test will be to check that our module has the module XML file in place. Okay, test the module is configured and enabled. Right, to do this we need an instance of the module list class. And to get that instance we need the object manager. The object manager will create an instance of any class for us, automatically injecting any dependencies. There are several different object managers available and for integration tests we always want the one from the test framework. Unfortunately, the return type hint for the object manager get instance method is for Magento Framework App Object Manager. So I always like to add a type hint here to get autocompletion for the additional methods that the test framework object manager offers even though we don't really need them here. So what we do need is the module list. I want the object manager to create a new instance of the module list. And import. Okay. And now we assert true. Oh, missing type hint. Thank you. It has a has method which takes the module name. Okay, and since the module list currently does not contain our module, this should fail. And so it does, it fails. Now let's add this module XML file. Again, I'm using a small file template for PHP Storm. All right, rerun the test, but I don't yet expect this to work. And the reason is caching. So I have disabled test cleanup in my local PHP unit XML, which means it will not rebuild the full configuration cache on each run, which means I have to manually remove the cache folder from the integration test directory. That's the sandbox directory inside of temp. So let's rerun the test again and the sandbox directory will automatically be regenerated with the current configuration merged together, including our module skeleton. So our test should pass. Yep, indeed that worked. Good. However, the only thing this is actually testing is that our module is enabled in the test environment. In the real environment, it's still not enabled. But for continuous integration, I want the test to check that the module is active in the real environment. So let's rename the method to test the module is configured and enabled in the test environment and then add a new method for the real environment. So let's duplicate this. Actually, there's one more thing I want to do first, which is add a message to the assertion 
so it's easier to distinguish which test might be failing. Now I can duplicate the test and adjust the message and the name. Of course, this test will still succeed because it's not really testing anything different from the previous test yet. So the question is, how can we specify that the module list uses the configuration from the real environment instead of the test environment? Since it's Magento 2, it's bound to be injected. Let's have a look. The module list receives a deployment config. Usually this contains the configuration from the test environment. So where does that get its information from? So the deployment config receives a config reader instance. And the reader, in turn, receives a directory list. Let's have a look at that. I'll set a breakpoint and use xdebug to inspect the class properties while the test is running. So here in the debugger we can see that the dir list instance basically has a list of directories. And the etc directory, oops, cannot get property? Why is that? Ah, uh, weird. Let me switch to PHP 5.6, maybe that'll work. Xdebug with PHP 7 still might be a little unstable. Oh, I actually only have to switch the interpreter inside of PHP Storm. Okay, second try. Yay, it works! That looks much better. And we can see that the etc directory is from the sandbox and all other directories actually are the correct real ones. What we want is the etc directory also to be the real one. How can we do that? How can we instantiate the dir list so it contains the path to the real etc directory? Here we have a whole list of default values and then the constructor receives a root and an optional array. The parent assigns the root as the root directory, gets the default path configurations and then allows us to override individual ones through the config array. We would actually be happy with the defaults. So it looks like all we have to do is create the class instance and ensure that the defaults are being used. Okay, let's do that. So the first thing we want to pass into our module list is a deployment config. So we'll have to build a bit of the dependency graph here until we get to the directory list. I like to use PHP Storm's copy by reference here so I can paste it and then import the class. We need to tell the object manager to use our instance of the deployment config. Okay, now for the deployment config we have to create a config reader. I copied that by reference again. Now I want to pass an instance of the config reader into the deployment config. Reader is such a nondescript name, I like to alias such class names so I can easily see what they actually are. That's nicer. Now I want to pass that into the deployment config, so I need the argument variable name. And the deployment config reader receives the directory list. This will be the final instance we will have to create. And as we've seen, we just have to create an instance with the default values and we should be good. Tell the object manager to pass it into the config reader. Run the test. Oh, the test fails. 
Looks like we're missing the root argument when we're creating the directory list. Let's add that. I'm happy some things haven't changed from Agenda 1. The good old base path constant still is there. Uh, but the test still fails. But it's actually right, the module still isn't enabled. In the real environment, we have to tell Magenta to enable the module. Bin Magento, module enable, mage to kata, skeleton module. And we can confirm that indeed now it is enabled. Let's rerun the test. And just as we expected, it succeeds. Good. So this completes the first episode. Since this is a kata, there's still one thing left to do, and that is delete all the code we wrote. The main takeaway of a kata is the learning experience, not the code. That way we can do the kata again. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.